We saw a ton of great feedback on our should you buy a 2023 Wrangler or wait for a 2024. Well, Gladiator guys, I have not forgotten about you. And in today's video, we want to talk about ordering, buying a 2023 Gladiator or should you wait for the potential, maybe will it happen 2024 refreshed Gladiator. In the beginning of this, we want to talk about what we're seeing on the back end, some of the things in the rumor mill. Then I want to go over all of the updates we could see on the exterior, some on the interior and give you my personal feedback at the end. If I was looking to buy a Gladiator, what I would be doing. Now, some two things that have been rumored to come out on the Gladiator were the Extreme Recon, so the 35-inch tire package, and potentially the Sky One Touch Power Top. Now, absolutely love that on the Jeep JL, and I know a ton of you guys do at home. A lot of people do order it, and they like the freedom just being able to press one button, having that retractable soft top come back, and then being able to close that up with just the touch of one button. Some purists absolutely hate it, but I think for a lot of folks that are just getting into the Jeep community, it's a great way to join into it and still get that open air freedom. The next thing that we saw on the patent side was actually going over the ability for the Gladiator hardtop to remove into four or eight pieces. It was a lot of different chunks and then reconvene in the back as a tonneau cover. So it was a way for you to completely carry your entire hardtop, but be able to go from top on to top list in about five minutes. I think that if we do see a refresh, both the power top and that will be introduced as options. I think it would be absolutely sick to see that. And honestly, I know with the Gladiator hardtop, it's a lot lighter than the Wrangler. So it's not too bad with one person to get off, but having it in those multiple chunks and being able to use it right in the bed, you'd always have that with you. So I couldn't have asked for a better thing and a better way to engineer that. The 35 inch tire package, we're gonna have to see if that happens, but I would say it'd probably take a little bit of engineering when it comes to the lift, the bump stops, but we've done it with the JL already since 21 on the Extreme Recon. So will we see it on the 24? I really, really hope so. That would be a sick addition and really a way for that midsize truck to stand out even more than it already does with its competitors. On the exterior, there has been a lot of back and forth on what we will see. I know Jeep kind of dropped a bombshell and they're normally used to doing this. So during the 20th anniversary concept that they released in Moab Easter Jeep Safari, we saw a different style grill than we are used to. It was up tighter, it had more mesh in the center than actual particular slotted grills, and overall just looked a lot different. Now there's a few reasons I could see them initiating that into the Jeep lineup. The first is that we're looking at the new three liter Hurricane engine, which is a twin turbo in line six. Now in order for a twin turbo to get cooled, there's a pretty big intercooler that needs to stick behind the grill. And to get more air, that's right, more mesh equals more air. I can see that being utilized because we're already seeing the Hurricane engine in the Grand Wagoneer. And rumor has it it's gonna be in the 1500 soon, so will it be in the Gladiator? That would ultimately probably be pretty next on that list. As far as that grill goes though, nothing has been confirmed yet, but I can tell you Jeep has done this in the past. And in 2005 and 2006, they actually had SEMA vehicles with the entire JK front grill on them hiding in plain sight. And that's what came out the next year. So could we see that happening? It is a big possibility. The other things that we're kind of talking about that I would like to see happen, I know a lot of you Gladiator guys or potential owners, we're looking at the taillights on these. If you're wheeling on a Gladiator and you're really taking it out there, those taillights hanging out are almost like a nice low hanging fruit to get ripped off. And a lot of you guys have done that. Oracle makes a great flush mount kit, but I really would like to see more of a flush mount come standard. So much like with the Wrangler, the Gladiator does share a lot of the interior styling cues. Basically from that front pillar and the front doors up, it is the exact same as the JL with the addition of a few switches for the truck bed lights and things of that nature. What we are looking at in a refresh is the modernization of the software systems. The rest of the Stellantis lineup does have the Uconnect 5 now, which has wireless CarPlay, a whole different layout, and honestly a lot more features than the Uconnect 4 that is currently in these Jeeps, even up to the 2023 model year. I would also say it would be neat to see a full digital cluster. We're seeing it now on the Ram 1500, the TRX, Wagoneer, Grand Wagoneer, a lot of that fleet, including even the Compasses and even the Grand Cherokee Ls have a full digital cluster. Wouldn't be much for us to slap one of those in there and give us a lot more features and the ability to just kind of modernize that as well. A cool thing too that I'm hoping that happens is the also update of the steering wheel. A lot of the other still Atlantis vehicles have gone to a more modern style, and even my wife's Grand Cherokee L has paddle shifters on it from the factory. Why are they putting paddle shifters into a Grand Cherokee L and not a Gladiator? Who knows, but I would love to see them in the Gladiator and really hope that they adapt that new steering wheel to the interior design. As far as the rear seating goes, I want to hear in the comments, what could you guys 
update or what have you done to yours to really make the rear a little bit more comfortable for your passengers. That's one area I think the Gladiator could do a little bit more improvement. Maybe have the seats recline or adjust the bolsters in those to make them a little bit more comfortable. So the end question, should you buy a 23 now or wait for a 24? If you guys watched my Wrangler video, you probably know what my answer is gonna be for this. However, it's it's pretty sketchy for me to say. It's kind of a weird decision and ultimately it is subjective. I know with the Gladiator, we saw a few additional new colors, including the pumpkin orange has returned as well as the Earl clear coat was on there as a limited run option. I love both of those colors. And once again, if you're looking for a particular color, you see it's available, it's probably time to do it. The Gladiator is not as scarce as the Wrangler right now because it doesn't have the 392. That's one thing I didn't mention in the beginning and I wish I would have. I would love to see the 392 in the Gladiator, even for the final run of the 392 in those big block V8s. That would be a perfect fit, especially with the Mojave trim to really compete with the Raptor R and some of those big Baja trucks. As far as engine option goes, the diesels will not be around too much longer. And I think we're gonna see pretty soon the introduction of the three liter Hurricane. So my opinion would be for you, if you're looking for a particular color, if you want a diesel or you want a Gladiator now, I would highly suggest ordering one or buying one from the local lot. If I was gonna order a Gladiator, what I would do is give Lindsay a call down at Dan Cummins Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Now the reason being for that is that you're gonna get below invoice pricing. You can ship the vehicle right to your door and you get them a whole heck of a lot faster than most other dealerships. I've heard horror stories of people walking into dealerships, calling them, and they have absolutely no idea what to do with an order, nor have they ever placed one. They've sold to every state in the country besides two, and their ownership full-heartedly agrees and wants to sell to every state in the country. Another cool thing is that they are that close to Toledo as they never have to have the vehicles go on a railroad car. And there's also been horror stories of all that railroad dust from metal on metal, rust flying up, hitting on the paint and sitting on the clear coat. So just go with them. It'll be trucked right down to their store and then it'll be shipped anywhere in the country for you. So that's what I would do if I was gonna order a 2023. But give me some suggestions on what you would like to see with a refresh or even some other vehicles you might like me to compare. Heck, there is a lot of off-road vehicles out there and this channel is about incorporating all of them with a Jeep primary focus. But let me know if you want anything else to be explained on this channel. Till next time, this has been a great one. I'm glad you guys are along for this journey. But my name is Matt with Dirt Road Cred and I want you to get out there and earn yours.